Leon, I've been able to get some new info that might help you. Fill me in. Apparently, there's a religious cult group involved. They're called the Los Illuminados. Los Illuminados? <laughs> That's a mouthful. Anyway, I had an unexpected run-in with the big cheese of this village. But you're okay, right? Yeah. But he could have killed me, but he let me live. And he mentioned something about me carrying the same blood as them. Whatever that means. Carry the same blood? Huh. Interesting. Anyway, there are more important things than solving riddles right now. You're right. Hurry and find that church, Leon. Hey guys, Wilder D here. We're back from more Resident Evil 4 Wii Edition, and thank God that herb was in there, because I really, really, really needed it. Now, if you last recall, Leon was getting the life choked out of him from Mr. Chief Batorez Mendez. And honestly, I'm really glad Leon didn't die there, because that would end this game prematurely, and I wouldn't have as much fun. But, apparently, Leon had a blood transfusion all this time and he didn't know about it that's scary so Leon why don't you keep conscious for the entire ride so you don't get this dumb shit happen to you and lose kidneys lungs maybe a heart Leon what are you doing Leon this room looks kind of small dude this room looks kind of crow oh my god you killed the guy that was on the john what the hell were you thinking Catcom is gonna get some serious bad PR here. You're killing people while they're on the toilet. What the hell? Yeah, it'll be fine. Now, this next area is basically where you should take all the effort to explore as much as you can because uh, this is where, after this part, guys, this is where things start to reach no return territory so some of the areas that you might be able to reach right now definitely won't be reaching later hello dr salvador i didn't know there were two of you in here so are you a different doctor or are you just the same guy getting recycled here nevertheless uh like i said while dr salvador is a very menacing enemy you should not be afraid of him, especially when you have no guys around him. While he was a pain in the ass in the village because you had like five guys picking at your back with axes and knives, here you have Dr. Salvador all by his lonesome. This is how difficult he can end up being for you. It's pretty much like any other fucking Ganado. Get that in your head? This guy becomes a big flat ass joke. Oh well. So nevertheless, stick to that strategy. Shotgun, knock on back or front, move on to knifing repeatedly, and you're good. That's a damn shame that lady could not sneak up on me, because, uh... Leon's just on top of his game. I mean, blasting brains wide open there. Shit. Did I really waste the element of surprise for this piece of shit item that I probably won't ever use because of the... Uh, okay, I'm, not, I'm gonna calm down now, but seriously, don't ever buy the TMP. Ever. Oh, if you thought the village would be empty now that you left a lot of bodies here the first time, Remember that there were a bunch of guys that had left the village in a cutscene, and they're back to maybe get revenge on your ass. So, if you really don't have the time or ammo, just wait, run past them, don't look back, and you should be okay. However, if you need to get more stuff that you maybe forgot to get the first time, uh, just be careful. One thing I love about this game, they actually still have the wonderful serene sound effect of the s jingle of you're safe friend take all the time you need save your game and don't worry about any enemies because you're just perfectly fine here they really need to keep that theme and they really need to put typewriters in the later games that would be nice just saying also lanterns they should not exist shoot them all because free money 
Every time, guys. Free money. Just don't stand right under it while you're doing it. That's actually a really dumb and stupid move, because uh, you don't really need to take unnecessary damage, because clearly that's shooting out a humongous pile of flame, and you don't want to be in the center of that. Ooh, nice. That is definitely a good deal. Killing one lantern and getting four, three treasures out of it. Liking it. Something that might interest you. Too bad I don't have a lack of discipline, buddy. Got a selection of good things on sale, stranger. And yes, basically this guy will be popping up Going quite a bit. In. And unfortunately, this time he's selling me a piece of shit stock for the TMP. Yeah, that's gonna actually make what it a useful weapon. Me? Not really. If anything, it's just Is going to make it viable <laughs> now. It's actually going to make it Is a that weapon that I can <laughs> maybe carry around, laugh at for a little Is bit, and only? then sell it. Because ah, seriously, don't waste price. your money ah, on the TMP. I cannot stress price. that enough. Ah. <laughs> Thank you. Remember, keep your elegant mass and your beer stein right now, because we still have to find a lot of good stuff for that. And trust me, you don't want to skip out on that. Now, with all the stuff that we've ran into so far, you would think, oh, are they going to throw a new big-ass challenge at us? Not really. Actually, this is probably a very steep decline of difficulty, because the only thing you really need to worry about are finding blue medallions here. Honestly, it's that easy. Also, you might need to worry about the element of uh, camouflage here, because these enemies kind of blend really well when you're surrounded by dead stuff. I mean, gravestones, and the fact that those gravestones are as tall as these villagers, and the really dull clothing that they wear, yeah, they fit right the hell in. So be a little careful when you're in this area. If anything, shooting the blue medallions is a really good idea, because it flushes these guys out, as you saw. And then you know the rest once you get them out in plain open, knocking them down with kicks and shotgun shells. They pretty much become fertilizer for these already dead people underneath. And yeah, the game's trying to tell you something. If you guys need more hints, I'm not going to give you them. Because this is pretty self-explanatory. And honestly, you would get this much hints in the original games, too. It's like, oh, maybe they're different for all the Greystones? If anything, Resident Evil 4 is very generous with the hints. But I would say this is possibly the hardest puzzle in the game coming up. Like, you could actually be a little stumped here but it's for a good reason also thank you very much dynamite guy I love you and how you just effectively team kill every time I see you just keep it up man it just makes my job a lot easier also this is a very sneaky blue metal don't forget about that guy Again, it's Leon. The door's locked. I can't get in. Didn't they teach you how to pick locks at the academy? Yeah. There's some sort of indentation, like something might fit inside. Well, there's no use standing around. Leon, you have to find some way or something to get inside. Wow, I really liked that subtle humor you threw at me, game. You might as well just say Jill Sandwich, and I would have gotten a bigger chuckle out of that. Because that would actually have been very snarky. Nevertheless, uh, more guys to blow the fuck up. Thank you. And an actual remnants of a puzzle. I'm really glad they actually were still thinking about those veterans that have played the older games and got their minds stumped somewhat hard. And the reason why I would say this is one of the toughest puzzles is because you actually have to have a method to it. Granted, it's not a very difficult method, but 
I've already screwed up. This is literally the point where quitting is not a bad idea, because it resets everything. So the idea is you want to kind of get one of the main, you want to kind of get one of the dead ringers first, two of them in fact, and you kind of have to work your way around the board so that you end up lighting all three, the, all those three that you really wanted, and basically take this green cat's eye, which just means great things for that beer stein. It's going to be looking really classy on someone's shelf. Also, keep in mind, you're still looking for blue medallions. Sneaky. I mean, the barn had, I think, more, but Jesus Christ, it, they're being really creative with the way, where the, they're putting these things, honestly. Now, you get a nice little scenery effect here. This is easily one of the best shots you'll see in this game. It definitely showcases the graphics of the system it's on. Not to mention you get to kill some more guys because they happen to be in the worst place at the worst time. Very sneaky game. And we get to get greeted with one of these things. Traps. Snakes in a box. Yeah, these things suck due to the fact that these they're just really annoying. It kind of keeps you on edge. You're like, oh man, oh man. Is there a snake in this box? Once that happens, you're going to probably be like having your knife out just waiting to strike them or you'll just totally forget about them and get bitten a lot of times. Luckily, you don't get punished horribly. And we have now officially found all the blue medallions and this guy's like, You son of a bitch! I took all the time and effort to hide these damn things and then you just come up and kill me and steal all my medallions. What the hell? Too bad for him. Probably the worst day of his life. So, now that we're done with all that, we're gonna, I'm going to now show you one of the other useful things of the flash grenade. While they're good at stunning opponents, they're also good for doing this, when you get this situation. Yeah, instant dead birds, followed by lots of fucking treasure to steal from. I don't know how the hell birds have been carrying small-ass chests like this, but... You want to take advantage if you ever see another situation like this. Unfortunately, I think this is the only situation, but it's a really nice Easter egg for you to kind of partake upon. Because you don't really lose out on anything. I got my flash grenade back, and I got a lot of money out of it. So, double whammy. I love it. Not to mention it's kind of hilarious. Okay, this area looks kind of big and round and a little... Okay, yeah, this is not an area I like to be in for too long. Leon, don't, don't, don't be here, dude. Yeah, I can hear it too. I've been hearing for like the past two minutes. Let's leave, Leon. Don't look back. Ooh, nice. I usually don't get shotgun shells out of a freaking random box like that. Well, guys, I think we're getting near the end of this video, but before we uh, ship off for the night, I will say this. Definitely want to make sure to stop here first, because as you can see here, that wonderful jingle is in the air, so take some time to breathe easy, and also realize that this is the merchant's base of operations, or at least one of them. Holy shit, no wonder he had all this stuff, because he's pretty much a walking warehouse, and then some. Okay guys, the thing about the specialized gun, if you happen to shoot just the medallions he's asking for, you get a Punisher. If you shoot all the medallions, he gives you a Punisher plus an upgrade attached to it so that's definitely a deal but guys we are running out of time thank you for watching next time we'll explore more of this game so have a great day don't get shot and adios
Got a selection of good things on sale, stranger. What are you buying? Is that all, stranger? <laughs> Thank you. Is that all? <laughs> Thank you. Ahí está. <risa> <risa> 